Let's learn how we can capture signatures in our sample app. First, we'll need to create a table that will hold our signature blobs. Create a table called Agreements. We'll have an Agreement ID column, which will be the primary key and an identity field. Next, let's add a subject, a date of signature, and finally, we'll add a signature field of type var binary max. Go ahead and save your changes. Let's add a model for this new table in our project. Click on the project name and press Refresh to pick up the new changes. Next, let's go to Models, and let's add a model for the Agreements entity. Save the new model. By default, the signature var binary field will be treated as a blob field allowing users to upload arbitrary files. Instead, we'll want to make sure that this field captures the user signature. Open the Project Designer. Under the Agreements controller, modify the Signature field and set the on-demand style to Signature. Let's see our new Signature field in action. Let's jump to the Agreements page and sign a new agreement. Notice that the form presents us with an area to sign for the signature. We can use our mouse. If we had a touch screen, we can also use our finger or a pen if supported. We can clear using the delete button and sign again. If we save the agreement, the signature will be saved as a PNG file and uploaded to the database. We can then download it as necessary. If we need to modify the signature, we can go ahead and sign again. Database storage is very expensive, and sometimes it's more beneficial to save large binary objects, such as signatures, to an external location. We can choose to save to the file system using a file system blob adapter. First, we'll need to remove the real signature column from the database. We'll add two metadata fields to track metadata about the file. Signature length and signature content type. Save your changes. We'll need to refresh the schema and update our model to include the new fields. Make sure to check the box next to the database schema has changed recently. Now let's open the model. Make sure to include the two new fields. Next, let's configure our virtual blob field using the project designer.
on the agreements controller, create a new field. Give it the name signature of type byte array. This field will be retrieved on demand. The source field will be the primary key of the table. We'll give a unique name to the handler and specify on-demand style as signature. Next, let's bind the field to all three views. Finally, we'll need to configure our blob adapter to point to the file system. Double click on the agreements controller. First, we'll specify the field. We'll specify the storage system type. And we'll specify a path template so that the application knows where to find the file. You can use field names wrapped by curly braces to refer to the field value. Let's try our blob adapter out. Notice that our signature has been successfully saved. We can also find our files located on the file system, as specified by our path template. While storing to the file system can be an effective solution for smaller projects, You'll want to store your blobs in a secondary location when your application scales. One such location, supported out of the box by apps created with code on time, is Azure Storage. In the Azure portal, I have prepared a sample storage account. Under Blobs, we'll create a new container to store our signatures. Next, we'll need the key. These can be found under the Access Keys Settings page. Copy a key. Let's modify our blob adapter configuration to use Azure. First, we'll switch the storage system to Azure. We need to specify a few additional parameters. First, we'll specify the account. Then we'll specify the container. And finally, we'll paste in the key. We can use the path template to organize the files. Let's see your changes. Let's upload a new agreement. We can see that our signature has been uploaded correctly. Azure portal, if we open our container, we can see our file uploaded here.